Ah, okay, we're live. Hi. Uh, hi. Getting. Okay, my stream is delayed. Okay. Hi, hi everyone. Uh, I hate to start so random and wacky, but um, getting this thing to start tonight was a bit of a hellscape. Um, because Rose's Wi-Fi went out. Rose is in Australia. Look so for me. So she's gonna be late to the show tonight. Um, but welcome to Ready to Start the Podcast, uh, our funniest show yet. Oh uh, look, Liv is here. Who's that? Who's that over there? Who's that? <laughs> Don't harass me today. Yeah, who's that? Okay, who's okay. that? Who are you? No, who what? are you? Who am I? Who are you? Oh yeah, yeah you're right. You? Uh yeah, off screen, uh between between the last podcast and this one, um I tripped and fell on concrete really hard and now my skin is green and my face is different. Wow. Man, they should have never changed the color of Ryan Ribbit's hat. <laughs> I, I was ready to draw the Ryan line there. Ryan Rivet has had a rocky history in 3D. Yeah, the, <laughs> the Ryan Rivet red hat controversy is going to go on for weeks. Yeah. First it was green, and then it was pink, and now it's like, now it's red. I can't, the, the glow of the movie theater is obstructing my eyes. Anyway. <laughs> Welcome to tonight's exciting episode. Uh, Rosa will be late, um, but she will be here eventually, I, I promise. Usual. What? Not as you, I'm kidding. Um, I'm just... This is the episode where we're all mean. Let's not be mean. <laughs> I'm, I'm. Is this the most like normal start to the podcast? I just realized, like, we're just on the show now. I guess so. What I just guess... happened. I guess so. Um, I'm, I'm Ryan. Who else is here? Uh, should I? Should I go? Okay. Yeah. Uh, hi. I'm, I'm Curb. I, uh, I'm an amateur Japanese English translator. I, I'm most known for, uh. For subbing Yokai Watch, everybody's favorite show with uh with the group Spectre Subs. Why Academy in theaters November second. Mark the date on your calendars. <laughs> I'm so excited. Uh, and who who else is our regular? I I I'm Gerb. You met Gerb. Now meet Gerb. <laughs> Gerb? <laughs> Gerb that hates God. Why? 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 Gerber, 20 well, years later. <laughs> what would that look like? <laughs> what is, I had that thought today. Like, like regular show, 25 years later, like the comic. You know, but like Gerber. I like the idea of, like, Gerber as, like, like a BoJack Horseman-esque reboot for Gerber. Where, like, he's, like, a bro <laughs> he's like kind of, like, a broken, like, awful man who is, like, dealing with his fall yeah. from stardom, even though he was, like, never that big of a star in the first place. <laughs> to me. Oh, how could I have fallen from such grace? Oh, Stu, you gotta help me out. I'm sick of I'm sick of carrying around your messes, Gerbert. Oh, Stu, come on, you're always my friend. You're my favorite child on the show. <laughs> I like the notion the random star, like one of the random cast members from Gerbert, would still be around. <laughs> Gerber, like they just can't they won, escape they won, him. They won the get to stay on Gerbert forever lottery, the most prestigious prize of our era. Now, that's more like a curse than a reward. You're stuck with Gerbert. You have to. It, it, Gerbert, it's like... a double-edged sword. Mhm. Mm yeah, I didn't. Did I introduce myself? You I can't did it. introduce myself. You no, did... Well, you I... introduced Gerb. That's very important. Right. Uh, I ate a big old taco. I thought I'd be late for this show. I was gonna, I was gonna be the late one. Am I right? <laughs> I, uh, you, were, you, you made it like the, in the exact thirty seconds we needed you. <laughs> Deep save the podcast. I did. They, they said they almost canceled it. Yeah, we almost had yeah. to cancel it because both Seep and Rosa weren't gonna be here for a minute. I was yeah. worried. I mean, yeah. unless, unless you all wanted to hear me and Ryan like do terrible montage for for an hour and a half, but uh. <laughs> that, that that couldn't happen. Well, everyone, I guess we should get into the to the first news topic of of the week. Um, yeah. you know them. Uh, they're crazy. They're zany to the max. Um, the Animaniacs are coming back. Make you mean you mean life. you mean backs? You have to rhyme, or it doesn't. Oh work. shit! You're right. Yeah. So, uh, is anyone hyped for the Animaniacs reboot? I sure am hype. Rob Paulson here. <laughs> I can't do well, a good Rob Paulson 
You should Rob keep... Paulson normal voice impression. Do you... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Do Rob Paulson? I think only Rob Paulson can do Rob Paulson. No, no, no. I, I know what to do. Uh, yeah, it, it, you know, I, I, it's been a big part of my childhood. Um, I'm Ash Paulson, son of Rob. Um, uh... Oh, yeah, that's right. I forgot about that. How many voices can I do? Um, Everyone, let's do my Tress Game Explained voice. So I mentioned that, like in a group chat that I thought it was weird they waited like so long to bring this show back because I felt like this show had its heyday like in the 2010s YouTube. Like that's when it was big. But like mm-hmm. someone kind of pointed out to me that like they didn't start doing reboots a lot of things until very recently. So I guess it makes sense. Yeah. If it came out in 2010, it would have been like, you know, like Skunk Fu or something. Why did I think of Skunk Fu? It's <laughs> fucking <laughs> Animaniac Skunk Fu. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's the new that's the new character they're adding to invigorate interest for the modern Rosa. For the modern Rosa? She's <laughs> yeah, the modern Rosa who's here now. Monkeys have overrun Thailand. Oh okay. Monkeys have overrun Thailand? <laughs> well, because we can't talk about any maniacs anymore. We should talk about the monkeys. <laughs> the monkeys are taking over the other maniacs. I I don't know what to that's say with about be... the maniac. I, I never watched. I, 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 my his- I, I didn't either. My, my history with Animaniacs is um, I watched it as a kid specifically because all the adults online would always say it's the best show ever. So I pretended like I knew what any of the jokes meant. <laughs> so people would think I was smart. I was like, oh, Doug, <laughs> Walk- <laughs> Doug Walker thinks this show good. It must be. <laughs> wow. That's like that's like the internet version of, of like proving yourself to the schoolyard bullies. Like, yeah, I get all the jokes on Animaniacs. What about it? But, yeah. um, when I've grown up and, like, tried to rewatch it, I'm like, I'm not super into it, admittedly. It's not really anything. Mm. I feel like that, in general, I feel like the show's gotten a little less popular over time. I see a lot more, like, people say they didn't like it now. Yeah. Like, uh, I watched some clips of it. Oh, sorry. Uh, uh, Rosa, go first. One of us has to change. <laughs> like, it's sort of very less memorable. Compared to the other cartoon, mm-hmm. Steven Spielberg, I'm guessing, I feel like. What like, um, was other thing? Like Tiny uh, Toons? Yeah, he did uh, Tiny Toons, uh, Animaniacs, Freakazoid, and I think Hysteria was part of that, right? Oh, don't forget Pinky Elmira and the Brain. Oh, yeah. don't forget Pinky Elmira and the Brain. Yeah, like the only thing I really remember is the. Whatchamacallit? Like that one movie special. Where, like, Lacko got, like, two pennies. Oh, yeah, the, yeah. the Wishing Star is not that far. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I can't do a Wacko voice. I haven't watched enough Animaniacs to do any of those. What you're doing tonight is just you throwing up. Are you okay? <laughs> oh, I ate too much. I ate too much. Oh, I ate too much uh, taco surprise from the cafeteria. Oh, oh yeah. Uh. But my other thing is, I wonder how good this is even gonna do. Because, like, I don't know, I just feel like people in general aren't super excited about Animaniacs as, like, a thing. And, you know, the more popular cartoons now tend to be the more story-based ones. I, I jo- I've joked about this, like, a hundred times now. But my prediction for the show is this is there's gonna be a clip from the first two episodes that gets really popular and big. This could be all over Twitter for, like, a week. And then no one's gonna talk about the show ever again. Mm-hmm. I think it being Hulu exclusive helps it in terms of like people having access to it. Yeah, I don't know how many people actually have Hulu. I I don't. I don't have any of these subscription services. I'm like the only person on the planet without Netflix. I have so. Hulu. Yeah, I do have, so I can yeah. see this. Yeah. We'll have to, we'll have to all watch Animaniacs as a family. <laughs> we I, are. We are. Uh, okay. I, um, someone in chat saying the Screen Eggs and Ham though did have a story. I do agree with that. I I almost because my my thing why I think Green Eggs and Ham dropped off so fast despite like the initial kind of like hype for it is I think dumping all that show out at once didn't help with like people like continuing to talk about it because it's like when you have a story based cartoon like you know the Owl House or like Steven Universe it helps to like have it on a week by week basis so people can keep right. talking about it with Green Eggs and Ham it came out we kind of got all our discussion for it out of the way and then like it's done. <laughs> 
Mm-hmm. Like the, that's the problem with like the binge model that all these shows are going for nowadays. Actually, somebody in chat brought up the the, the anime parody, and like I think that phenomenon you mentioned of people posting one clip on Twitter and then not caring is already happening with the I, trailer. Yeah, oh I don't see God. anything besides that anime clip. Well, I think credit, like, credit where it's due. That anime clip is one of the few times a comedy animated show has done an anime parody, and I can tell the person oh, yeah. who drew has watched anime before. Yeah, yeah, you're yeah. right. That's true. Mm-hmm. But um, I, I saw, but the, like the day before the trailer dropped, I saw like the Jurassic Park parody trailer that was suggested to me on YouTube for some reason, uh, and so I started looking stuff up about it. It was like the Jurassic Park trailer was like vaguely I was cynical about it because it seemed like they're kind of what's the expression? Not milking their own cow. That is not an expression, but that's tooting their own like. horn. <laughs> so I don't know something like that. And then like uh-huh. the trailer came out, and I think it was kind of like. You know what the Simpsons Disney Plus trailer did? Oh. You kind of know that they're not happy about being on Disney Plus. But this felt like the same kind of fourth wall breaking haha, but like opposite energy. Like it felt less like haha capitalism and more like rubbing it in your face that capitalism is making this a streaming service exclusive. Yeah. Like I don't know. It felt like it, it wasn't really a joke that they were rubbing it in. And it kind of gets worse because I heard, I don't know how true this is, that they didn't hire the original writers and they were like begging to be on or something. So. I get, it's a I, little bit hard not to be cynical about this whole thing. Uh, Rosa, you sound like you wanted to say something about it. I feel like one of their jokes is that they're gonna start knock, knocking designs like modern cartoon. Cause like they're just like this split shot of like dot in a different art style. I'm gonna hope it's like the opposite thing, and they make fun of people who get up in arms about like cartoon art style. Cause I I do think I do think I am hoping because like I did see that shot where like dot kind of looks like a. Calard's kidney beans smiles, social justice warrior, soy boy, um, Calard's um, <laughs> universe oh, face. Yeah. People, people lost it about the man's planning line. Like, I, I think people gave themselves aneurysms over that line. Yeah. Well, no, Animaniacs always <laughs> been like that. Yeah, well, that's exactly like the that. thing. People act like it's like this is just a new thing for the reboot. Like, no, Animaniacs did that all the time. That's why people yeah. talk about it. I, 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 I kind of feel like if there are problems with it, um, to me, it kind of seems like it would be that it's like too close to the original mm-hmm. because I feel like it just came out in such a different time. Like it was right after the '80s, where a lot of cartoons were so like bland and like yeah. commercially. Um, and so it was like probably really novel to have a cartoon that would like break the fourth wall and like be funny and self-aware. Huh. But now we kind of have a lot of those. Like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so uh, I don't know. It'll, it'll be interesting to see how it stands up. I um, I also will stand by this. Part of the reason I'm lukewarm about it is I learned recently. I kind of prefer when reboots are really different from the original now. Because yeah. like my favorite things like reboot wise have been like the Looney Tunes show, and I really like uh, the new Ducktales. And I've been meaning to watch Rise of the TMNT, which looks really good. Yeah. And like it really is disappointing that like you see like that dot in the different arts are like you know what they could have really gone for that. I, I, I think for as much as people uh, complain about ahead. like reboots changing things i feel like the, i feel the opposite i feel like many reboots now like the whole shtick is like look how close to the original it is now mm-hmm. that's been a pretty recent yeah thing i think um but yeah yeah i feel like if they did change how i mean x looked though a lot there would be so much like doug walker made a very angry video about it <laughs> and then they would have parried it in an episode about how they put Doug Walker in Animaniacs. So, oh, I want to I ask something. Doug Walker is, like, friends with some of these people. I, he was for a bit, I think. He was friends with some of the Animaniacs people. Can you imagine, like, Doug Walker was, like, on an episode? I could actually, like, picture that very clearly. Like, they put him in, like, the background. And he's, like, he's all, like, like 90s, like, rubbery cartoon. <laughs> Just, like, the drooping body of Doug Walker. Just in the background. Yeah. yeah. That would like, be something. It wouldn't be like the ABGN cartoon. Oh my god, the ABGN nostalgia Wait. critic anime appearance. Wait, that was the hold on, that was the thing. Yeah, did you not yeah. know by the time Doug Walker and uh, ABGN like, got a cameo of the, like an anime? I, no. The yeah, I, I don't I know what the anime was. was. <laughs> yeah, they were in there. They were in there. Yeah, also, like, there was that one ABGN cartoon. 
Oh, you're right. Yeah, he has done a few cartoon animated stuff. Um, they should they should put in the credits special thanks to Doug Walker. <laughs> He'll probably be like, "What?" The <laughs> big and then 2020. Uh, I guess my other thing about the reboot I wanted to talk about is I find it, it they got rid of almost like 90 percent of the main cast. I noticed because it's only the Warner siblings and Pinky and the Bright now. Everyone else is gone apparently. I mean, who remembers anything but that? I was gonna really? say, yeah, um, the only major <laughs> loss I feel like is, I I did like Slappy. I think she she was one of the better side characters. I is think Slappy she, the she, she's the old lady squirrel. She was one of the better oh, okay. ones. I I think she did get a bit rip-offed. Um, but like, yeah, otherwise, How like- How can they get rid of the god pigeons? I was gonna say, who cared about the fucking god goodfellas or the, the two separate <laughs> dog characters? <laughs> Yeah, uh, what about Schnookers and Meat? Where are they? <laughs> not from all the things yet! <laughs> you know? They could I, be. I think Animaniacs are just afraid of girl bosses. No. <laughs> What's well, it's, it's a very good No, but they're never mansplainy. Where's Cornel? You're not just making. I like the idea of just making Animaniac segments up. Like, oh, who could forget <laughs> Do Doogie and Boogie? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, no, uh, uh, the doctor and hello nurse, like, security guard aren't there either, it looks like, which I find interesting. I can't think of any reason to remove, like, the Warner Brothers side characters, like, who appear in their segments, mostly. Mm -hmm. It's interesting, uh, because there was, like, an Animaniacs GameCube game, like, ten years after the original show came out, and it also got rid of every character but the Warner siblings and Pinky and the Brain. Maybe it's like a right. <laughs> they just had thing. no idea what to do with all these characters in a video game. I had to imagine it's also just like how many side quests. Those are the most like popular ones too, by far. Yeah, if you never watch the show, then like those are the good Pinky and the Brain and the Warners are the ones that you're gonna recognize. Yeah. Yeah, kind of Liv brings up a good point about the Hello Nurse thing. It's like I wonder if they're gonna like tone down the jokes where like a lot of them was kind of just Yakko being really into women. Unless maybe that's just a disproportionate amount of clips on YouTube. I don't know. I haven't seen too uh, much of anime. They could have brought I'm gay now. <laughs> they could have brought Hello Nurse back and she just yeah. goes I know you're talking about Yak no they can both like say they're like Hello Nurse and Yahoo can meet up after years of not seeing each other and say, We're both gay now. <laughs> you know what? I think this should happen, unironically. Let's let's do it. Can we write think, to to Steven Spielberg? I, they should have a Hello Nurse from like an alternate timeline. Oh my god. In. And, and 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 then and then and then Dot would be like, "Hello, nurse." Um, uh, I I haven't played Crash Four. I can't think of any more jokes. I I will so, say the, the most surprised. I I am surprised they didn't bring like the doctor guy back, like the bald one, because Rob Paulson also plays him, and he was usually comedic for all to the Warners. So I'm surprised that like, he, he probably died <laughs> in universe. Yeah, of old age. <laughs> what you... well, why can't he just come out of the grave? The yeah, hold on, the waters came out of the grave. writing in Animaniacs. I am writing a video essay about this right now. He's stuck in the time sphere like Professor Farnsworth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, at, the, at the end of the show, the, the water birds are going to be like old now, but then like he comes out of the time sphere and the waters are going to be looking at you like, ready to do it all again? <laughs> And that's how season two will start. The, the the reboot in the Spielberg extended cartoon universe is just like that Jurassic Park trailer. What if I, I what if that's like a teaser of things to come? Where like they're just gonna like shove all of Steven Spielberg's movies in there somehow? Unless uh, did they do that in the original one? I don't uh, know. Well, you're wrong because they need to save all Steven Spielberg's movies for Space Jam too. Yes, exactly. Yeah. That's what I was gonna say. That's what. That's we are, we we. Do you think the Warners are going to be in that movie? Uh, hold on, should we just should we just shoot the Space Jam two? I feel like we should talk about Space Jam two. Actually, I forgot to write about. Yeah, what down. happened with Space Jam two? Besides, it's happening. So Space Jam two is like barely a Looney Tunes movie. Um, <laughs> it's like about Warner Bros. properties and nothing else. Oh, yeah, that's right. I forgot. Now they're doing the cinematic universe. Mm -hmm. Let me let me like find like the thing that published it. Better. Hold on. Like a... Yeah, I did have a thought on this. I feel like the problem with, like, between this and, like, Scoob and, like, whatever else, the problem with the cinematic universe approach right off the bat is that, like, the Marvel, it works with Marvel in terms of drawing people in because they built it up, like, focusing on all these, like, iconic characters individually mm. and just telling new stories with them. And then, like, they slowly introduce that they're all coming together. 
I mean, by the end, it still got a little bit ridiculous, but, like, now all these people trying to, like, capitalize on that are just, like, going straight off the bat, and, like, it's too much to handle, <laughs> it feels like, and it's just, it gets in the way of them telling, like, any kind of good story, just because they can shove in, like, as many character cameos and stuff as they can, and it's, like, I don't know, <laughs> this is gonna collapse in on itself after Yeah, uh, hold on, let me, let me read the, uh, synopsis that came out, um, during a trip to the Warner Bros. Studios, NBA superstar LeBron James and his son accidentally get trapped within a world that contains all of Warner Bros. stories and characters under the control of a malfunctioning, all-powerful force named AIG, played by Don Cheadle. With the help of Bugs Bunny, LeBron must navigate through a never-before-imagined world filled with iconic movie scenes and characters as they reassemble the Looney Tunes to rescue his lost son. Now to get back home, LeBron and the Toons have to unravel AIG's mysterious plan and win an epic basketball game against digital gamified super versions of the NBA and WNBA's biggest stars that the entire world watches. What does this do with space anymore? Yeah, question. Yeah? Yeah? How do you spell Don Cheadle? I just had an open, I already forgot. Don Cheadle, I think, is C-H-E-A-D-L-E. Oh, Cheadle. Yeah. Not so, Cheeto. Not Don Cheeto. So, like, one? Why is this even called Space Champ 2? There's no aliens in it. No, well, because it's basketball. And Bugs Bunny. I also okay, like... Well, I uh, also, you, you forgot Marvin the Martian. He's in it. I also oh. really love... I can, I can already I picture, like, how mediocre, like, the final basketball thing is going to be. Because, you know, the first one... The other basketball players were also cartoons, and this one they're gonna be real people. So like, there's like no funny jokes you do with like Bugs Bunny like whacking like a giant alien. It's gonna be <laughs> fucking oh, awful. I don't know. If you have like Pennywise, if you have like a big CGI finger or something. Well, Penny, you wait. Pennywise is in it. What? Yeah, he's in it. Wait, what? Penny like is an alien too. Uh, you... Is he? Oh, I don't true. know what the that's hell true. Pennywise is. I, I forgot. Still like a giant spider. Uh, I yeah. need to stress though the uh, the players they're played against in the final isn't like Joker or Pennywise. It's super versions of NBA biggest stars. Oh, okay. Well, they're gonna have like they're gonna be like digitally like scaled up. They're gonna have like CGI. <laughs> they're gonna have like CGI powers. They're gonna look like the Hulk from Endgame. I love the fact that like <laughs> the only mention of like Looney Tunes in this is that Bugs Bunny is like a side character. You know what? I'm can, can I be honest? Yeah. Um, when I first, like, this, like, leaked a while ago. Yeah, yeah. And that's why we did, like, the Scoob thing where, like, it, like, led into a sequel to Space Jam. Yeah. <laughs> I can't just mention that offhand. What are you like, talking don't about? Don't worry about it. Filming. Um, but, I don't know. The more I think about this, I feel like it's, because, like, Space Jam is, like, I don't think Space Jam is like a very good movie. Oh, it's it's awful, yeah. <laughs> so like, it, if if it's gonna feel more like a commercial that has characters that they're just using because people recognize them, as opposed to like a genuine like Looney Tunes property, you know what? I think it might actually be better if they yeah. just throw away any pretense of like caring about the Looney Tunes and just go wild. Oh, let me let me, let me like stress. I think this is gonna be hysterical. I am so excited for like how dumb this is gonna be. It's gonna be so like bad. I'm so we're excited. Gonna, we're gonna do a scoop too with this. <laughs> and also, it's it hard. Gonna, it's yeah. hard to get too mad because we also have like actual Looney Tunes things like on HBO Max. Like whatever, do do whatever stupid thing you want to do with Space Jam too. I have actual Looney Tunes things. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I also wonder if this is like even gonna do well or if it's gonna be like they're gonna hype it up so much. Like, oh yeah, remember Space Jam? And then it's gonna come out and. Like nobody's gonna talk about it. See, first that tweet like our friend made. He made, it was like he went to like a space jam. No, he was like at a working in a movie theater, and they were doing like a space jam like <laughs> re showing for like its anniversary, and only five people came, and someone walked out and said, I "Remember it being funnier." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I I honestly I have no idea how this is gonna do. I I I don't know. It's 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 such a weird thing i feel like this is the trailer is gonna be like when the trailer drops there's yeah. probably gonna be so much like whoa what the whoa because like they're gonna be like hey boys uh, forget about me and it's gonna be like the joker um, joker though 
all of them. It's going to turn into like a crossover of like every famous I, movie character named Joker. I would I would not be surprised if they did a Joker. It was like, oh, here's all the Jokers. <laughs> the, uh, the Harlem Jokers. I, I am very... If there's one thing I'm unironically excited for, um, I think the people who like did the actual 2D animation for both uh, Space Jam and Back in Action are back for this. So I, I assume at the very least there'll be some good 2D animation. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, I want to make a prediction for a scene. Yeah, yeah. Joker's going to pull his gun, and then if he shoots it, and it's, and, uh, it's going to shoot out like a little flag, and on the flag, it's going to say, delete this. It's going to be his favorite meme for a whole month. They're going to put a scene in just so people on Twitter can gif it. Yeah. <laughs> Twitter meme bait, bait my face jam. Based, I think this they're banking on like the name value of Space Jam itself being almost kind of meme bait, yeah. but like before memes were a thing. You know, while we're here talking about Space Jam, I think we do need to acknowledge that back in action is like a million times better. Oh yeah, Definitely. and it got less recognition. I I could talk a lot about back in action. I could, I, I I don't know. It's it's definitely like it's Space Jam is like a movie that has looney tunes in it but it doesn't really feel like a looney tunes movie mm. like very thoroughly i mean like the looney tunes are in the movie a lot yeah but it's not really the same spirit yeah but for sure back in action back Over. in action was like like it, it was directed by like um joe dante who did like um if you watch his other stuff like he did like the gremlins yeah movies, some other stuff and he like you could tell he loves like wacky you know, cartoony stuff and like makes like actual jokes. I think what, what helps for me uh, is that the first movie is about all the Looney. It feels like the first movie has two characters, all the Looney Tunes at once grouped together, and LeBron. <laughs> who's, who's the one? Michael Jordan is the first one, right? Yeah, yeah. Michael, it's Michael Jordan, and then all the Looney Tunes at once are like one character. But in uh, Back in Action, uh, Bugs and Daffy are like the main character. It's just those two as like the main characters, and they go like beat from beat to other Looney Tunes. So it feels more like a like a Looney Tunes thing, I would say. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, we have in the chat. Will the Gremlins be in Space Jam too? I mean, they were in Lego Batman. So that's true. They were. I feel like anything that was in like the Lego movies. Not, can I, they should just put Lego Batman in it. Space Jam time. Two is just gonna be a worse version, like the last seat, like the last third of like Lego Batman. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, I yeah, I'm honestly. This should be the surprise cameo, like Will Arnett as Lego ba- Batman just like walks on screen. Oh my at the god. End. <laughs> no, it should be. There should be like, a, oh, I'm Batman. You see a shadow, and then he walks on, and he's like the size of an actual Lego. <laughs> <laughs> LeBron James is like steps on him. He's like, not cool. Uh, uh, any other? Honestly, there's. Oh god. Uh, yeah, if depending on like, if this movie just realizes how ridiculous it is, and I think this could just be such a like weird and just like a movie that you could just watch and be like this is crazy i i'm having a good time yeah uh, i mean i don't know oh, if you had a good time watching scoop go on rosa <laughs> remember in the first space jam lebron you know when michael jordan walked up and just said fuck them kids to bugs <laughs> and then he just kept going out with the movie <laughs> and bugs like okay that's weird anyway <laughs> Man, awkward. <laughs> See, the worst part about the Looney Tunes being like a side thing in Space Jam Two is you won't get like all the Looney Tunes saying like, oh, "This is bad. This is I believe this is really bad." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, nailed it. Damn. Oh man. So still, still can't forget how LeBron sort just sat on the couch and Daffy was like. Alex, what's he doing that? What? Anyway, uh, next <laughs> next to- I feel like next, what? next topic. I think this is the thing Curb probably wants to talk about the most. Oh uh, uh, yeah, yeah, we gotta. So this is a, this is a very awkward <laughs> shift from like anybody. this could be a really awkward shift from like Looney Tunes trailer quotes. Um, level five. Um, it's which is the creator of a uh, series such as Yokai Watch and Professor Layden. Uh, their U.S. branch. 
it's it's pretty much all but confirmed to be like shut down. Okay, yeah, okay, don't worry. I've rehearsed for this extensively. Okay, yeah, go on. <laughs> all right, yeah, so basically, um, it kind of started last year when there was a big like exodus of level five Abby. Abby is like the branch of level five international that did marketing and stuff. They didn't really do the actual localizing too much. Um, most of the time it was handed off to like Nintendo Treehouse or some other companies. But there was a huge layoff. This all the social media uh, people got laid off. A few of the translators and marketers and things all got laid off. And this was last year. Immediately after that, they announced a Yokai Watch Four localization in July. And then immediately after that, according to one of the few anonymous posters on 4chan that were apparently ex-employees, they like went into starting to file for bankruptcy around then. And then it just so there was like dead quiet on level five then for about a year. And then last week, a gamesindustry.biz article comes out saying that they're pretty much starting to shut down uh, their offices in North America, and the chances of localization for anything are slim, which is sending the entire Yokai Watch fan base, which uh, I am in connection with the majority of at this point, into a tizzy. Uh, so, yeah, there was a lot of it was just speculation for a while, but then uh, another 4chan thread popped up with an ex-employee saying, like, I don't have all the screenshots on me right now. I like did not prepare. <laughs> but um, basically, the COO of the company uh, who is managing the localization uh, companies that they outsource to is like totally awful. Um, they finished Snack World and Yokai Watch 3 in like early 2018 or something like that and sat on them forever. Uh, they Their first draft of Snack World with like all the crappy lines in it was like they were forced to take the first draft and publish it. Um, because level five did, just like did not put any effort into editing it at all, and it's just like it, it, there was there's a few more examples, uh, but it was just kind of a disaster all around. And uh, the long and short of the okay, what for is canceled, uh, as far as we know. This is again, this is all like anonymous ex staffers like talking about this, but honestly, I could believe it. The so, has been on the wall. So this is kind of stuff me and Curb at the least have like kind of known about for almost like a year now. Like a lot of like this kind of. <laughs> I'm sorry, I've yeah, been going on for this. For no, so it's I. I think it's good to like get the whole story out there, so like we understand what's happening. Yeah, uh, yeah, we've kind of known that level five like U.S. branch was a mess for a while. We kind of figured, and all that's happened recently is that we're like almost confirmed and i felt like this was riding on the wall for a while because um both the, the third game got like a very limited release uh i don't think two and busters did very well like like they did okay probably at best and then snack world got like okay let me let me tell you how snack world, <laughs> let me tell you how snack world did in the u.s nobody talked about it except vinnie vine sauce shaved it once and said he hated it <laughs> it was all the publicity <laughs> Snack World got in the West. Was yeah, Spice Sauce Snack said he World, hated it. <laughs> Snack World was just a tragedy all around. Another thing that that thread brought up was that they were trying to get a TV deal for the anime, but they saw that the game ended up being rated T because they accepted the crappy script that they drafted and they turned it down. So the anime was like a doomed to country roll, half finished. So yeah, that was just like a whole other mystery. But Yokai is unfortunate. I, yeah, but, I, I think level 5 just kind of kept shooting for the moon in the West. I think they weren't ready to accept that, like, Yokai Watch was going to be a niche thing in the West, and they wanted it to be big. Yeah. I like the anime, but I'm going to be blunt. I think doing things like the anime and Blasters might have been too much too fast. Uh-huh. For, like, a series yeah, that's, like, going to be small in the it West. Was a, it was a lot of hubris. I think, I remember Hino has said in articles and interviews that he was not happy when Yokai Watch 1 was only a million seller internationally <laughs> and did like 500k in the US and from there it just kind of started to down spiral into like as soon as Yokai Watch started declining at all it was throwing spaghetti at the wall until it sticks and it's been like that for the last three years and that's how we're at now it's a Tokusatsu middle school uh, <laughs> AU slash alternate timeline where aliens are about to destroy the world yeah, also, I, I think bringing Snack World it over in general was a fucking mistake. <laughs> yeah, honestly, I don't know what they thought they were doing with that. But yeah, like, they were trying to capitalize off Adventure Time vibes, but, like, Adventure Time was over for, like, three years, two years. I, I don't think like... they also grasped what people liked about Adventure Time yeah, besides exactly. main <laughs> character with dot eyes and wacky people. Yeah, yeah, pretty much that. So... Um, yeah, that's that's the state of Yokai Watch, and um, there is, like, some people have brought up the possibility that they'll just keep doing localization at their Japanese offices, 
but I kind of see it unlikely that they'll be able to invest the effort in the resources, especially because companies that they have outsourced to that have been under level five's management have now complained about it. There were Glassdoor reviews that came out a couple of years ago also saying how horrible the CEO COO was. So now nobody wants to work with them. Uh, they're not doing great in Japan. Most of their franchises except Yokai are dormant and Yokai is going in whatever weird direction Yokai is in. So it's uh they're kind of on fire. Yeah, level five as a whole, like even like beyond the the Western branch thing, they've been kind of known to like just throw shit at the wall and hope for the best. And this isn't a knock at anything they've like made post like original Yokai Watch series. Like I like Shadow Side, for example, and I can respect the idea of Y Academy. The problem is they do them way too fast and don't give them any time. Because Shadow Side was almost like barely around for two years, pretty much, and then it was gone. And why Academy it feels like really like Hino is just writing something completely off the walls. Like I am not gonna go into the whole Y Academy plot here because that would take all night. But basically, it's like aliens destroyed the Yokai world at the end of the reboot, and like they're all reincarnated as high school, uh, middle schoolers. Sorry. Oh yeah, every single Yokai and, Watch and character it's just is dead. The absolute most batshit <laughs> plot you could make go for Yokai Watch. If you haven't followed Yokai Watch in years, you are probably already scratching your head. And I am one of the people translating it, and I have no fucking clue what's going on ever. So, that's that's the state of Yokai Watch. Um, also, I should I should mention probably um, they they know we're fan subbing it, so <laughs> we're they are probably depending on us in a sense maybe. Uh, so Go that's on. um a thing that's a little scary, but yeah. Uh, and the Ekro looks awful. That will- <laughs> I'm sorry because I know my teammate that's something the Snack World is in the chat, but yeah, I don't like Snack World either. I, I think I could I, I could see what the problem here was though. They're they're so focused on Yokai Watch, they never they never yeah. decided to Yokai listen. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck off! That was like the funniest fucking joke in the world. It's like, like four. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, you know, uh, so like, it gave them a massive, like, hubris, basically, ever since 2014. No, I... I think it them, in a sense, you know, I like Yokai Watch, obviously, or else I wouldn't be dedicating years of my life I, to translating I, it. I think but, it's fun. Yeah, they, it, I... It, it, oh, go on. Yeah, I was just gonna say, it, like, kind of destroyed their whole company's, like, worldview, and I think that's kind of what sent them down the drain, eventually, yeah. in terms of, like, going all in and putting all their eggs in one basket, and now they have nothing to show for it. Yeah, uh, not they, necessarily nothing, but they, they you know. It's, I mean, it's going for reference, there were three mainline Yokai Watch games in about five years. Yeah, that's like, like imagine if like Gens one to four of Pokemon came out from like nineteen ninety six to nineteen ninety nine. That's kind of where Yokai Watch is at, in yeah. a sense. There was also the fact that they attempted like the two different versions in the third game. Yeah. yeah, they did do that for the second and third, and then they dropped it. Although here we only ever got. Oh no, they did it for Blasters, but. Here we only ever got one version of three, which is probably like the definitive edition of the oh, game. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, yeah, they printed like two copies of it. So I, this is just I, 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 this for me. This is like I, you know, I'm watching like Disney XD, and this thing is on TV. I know. And then, I'm so sorry. And then like a year later, no, no, no. I'm talking like Yokai Watch is like I'm. I it had a TV show on Disney XD. I'm like, oh, what's this like slightly intriguing thing? Let me. Uh, and then like a year later, it's like it's like gone. Yeah, there's, the dub was, there's no more. The Where'd it go? Consistently screwed in terms of air times. I think from its inception, but especially when season three started. Season three had like half the budget of yeah. Rose of Dragon. Season three had like half the budget of the uh the first two. They like replaced the whole cast and everything. Yeah. I didn't see all of it, yeah. but it's kind of a shame that it really went under the radar because it introduced um one of the better human characters in the series, which is you know, Ho slash Haley Ann. Yeah, I, and, and every show. every character in like the second half of the sh- like the third season of the show, which is when uh, you know, and Usapan joined the main cast had to get their voice actors changed because uh, I think I think cause, uh, the first season used union voice actors, right? And the second season didn't, right? That's what yeah. kind of the thing was. Yeah, um, something like that. And it, it's not the worst thing in the world for like Nate and Javanyan, but you can really fucking tell with like Whisper, like no disrespect yeah, to the Whisper, <laughs> No disrespect. Oh, uh, they got really lucky. 
they got really lucky with uh like Inaho's voice actor getting like oh, a good yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, her voice sounds so good. Uh, I never watched the Yoko Watchery cutscenes in English. I have barely seen anything of Yoko Watchery in English because I played ah. in Japanese like years and years ago. But uh, it does seem like they did a pretty decent job with the localization, considering they were giving the uh, dilemma of they're moving from Japan to America, and uh oh, the game was set in America in the <laughs> That's first right. place. It did, the America. But they handled it the best they could. Let me let me explain. Uh, so in Yokai Watch Three, the plot is uh, Kida, who lives in Japan, goes to America, but the, the localization made made the change that the game takes place in America, like no matter what. So when he goes to America in the English version, he just goes to a place called BBQ, which is more American than the rest of America. <laughs> it's really something. And there's a really awkward yeah. joke because in the original thing, the the idea was he can't speak English. There's a scene where, like, he's trying to understand someone because he can't speak English. So he has to find a yokai who can let him speak English. And the Western release, they change it to, he can't get the accent on, like, all the Texan people. So he needs a yokai to understand the Texan accent. It's really ridiculous, unfortunately. I'm pretty sure it was, like, the marketers who decided, like, this had to be, like, a 90s, early 2000s style market. Uh, kind of, like, like what they used to do with Pokemon and Yu-Gi-Oh! and all that. Yeah. Um, so the translators were just stuck with this absolute stupid fucking predicament. Um, with the fan subs, I usually do, like, uh, my script is not, I try not to make the script a dry, but I keep the Japanese, uh, references in. Because I honestly think, like, if they marketed it as, like, it's, you know, it's Japanese and there's Japanese culture in it, I kind of thought that maybe kids would like it more because, like, kids love anime now. It's, it's a lot more mainstream. Um, it might be like a learning experience in a sense, even though yeah. like you know a lot of the yokai are. Made oh, I mean, I mean straight up, I can't believe more like channels and like studios aren't hopping on the fact that like anime is kind of a mainstream thing now. Yeah, mm. seriously. I mean, like you see it in like little jokes, like the Animaniacs thing. Yeah. But, like, yeah, you know, it's it's really like I worked at um the summer camp last year, and like these eleven year olds were talking about JoJo's on the on the uh, <laughs> sports field, and it's like. I wow, and they were talking about watching it with subs, and it's like this is like something that yeah. that a lot of people are into yeah. now. No, totally. I like, I'll go on. I was gonna say, and like by real like experience, I had like um, I mean, a lot of friends that really like to go and eat like Eastern food and like get into like the Eastern stuff. The the uh, looking back at like four kids, a lot of four kids stuff is just like crazy. How it feels like weird <laughs> how they like try to erase like as much yeah. traces of like another culture as possible it was really really weird it's really I mean, edit food so it looks american yeah that was so fucking stupid i mean it it kind of worked all right with stuff like pokemon because it's not really i mean kanto and a lot of the early regions are clearly like based on japan one was literally named fucking kanto but um the you know otherwise pokemon's a pretty un like a, a pretty ambiguous world but like right. i don't know once you got into stuff like that was really set in Japan. Like, I think Yu-Gi-Oh! Is, is Yu-Gi-Oh! set in just Japan? <laughs> Cause, I like, mean, Sonic, is Sonic X is, like, fully set in Japan. And the Kirby right back at you is a lot of, like, Japan-centric. Yeah, Sonic X takes place in Japan, I'm pretty sure. Oh, really? I thought, I see, I thought it was an America parody. Uh, it might be, I'm not sure. But I know for a fact... Oh, uh, yeah, I got, I thought, I'm pretty sure I thought it was America But I, I do know for a fact, Kirby right back at you has a lot of episodes, like, about Japanese culture stuff, which made it awkward, yeah. too. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And that's gotta... the problem with Yokai Watch. It's like they're most of the episodes are like that to some extent. They never got to the part in the anime where they really start contrasting Japanese and American culture, where like they bring in Tomyon and stuff. Yeah, that would have been just like, how do you even write around that if you're pretending it was already in America? It, it's like like they have a, the whole later later they have a whole segment about like less Sam Yan Yan Marai, I think is how they localized him. Like going around and learning about Japanese culture and like the Koma Bros going through Japan. It, it just, it would have been a mess if the dub continued. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think that's more or less what I have to say on the topic. Okay. Uh, you know, I might end up talking about it more later in other venues because this is like my, uh, my life. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, that's the situation. All right. Does anyone have any like last things I want to say about like level five or you okay watch? I guess. I'm sorry, I went off. So no, much. it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> that's why we have you on here. Let's talk. Yeah, uh, that's my that's my role. My last. Oh, go on. Level one. Whatever happened to level one, two, three, and four? <laughs> <You> were... <laughs> the, the the failed versions in an alternate timeline. 
Last thing I want to say yeah, is, it all comes together. Uh, we're, we've mostly talked about the Western branch of level five tonight, but I think it should be noted, like all all of level five is like they they jump on like any opportunity they can all the time, and it has been them in the butt like constantly. Like there's like yeah. they like try to have like four separate yokai watch mobile apps going at once, and one of them failed so badly, you got like one update and then died. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, the one of them, like, most of them are shutting down. Well, not most of them. The only one that makes a lot of money still is Puni Puni, and maybe the Son Goku one, but yeah. It's, I could write an entire essay, I probably will at some point, <laughs> about how, like, screwed up it is, like, in all aspects of this company, but yeah. Uh, I couldn't, someone's asking chat, I couldn't give you an update on, like, what the state of the Laden series is. That seems to be the most stable thing from what I can gather, but I don't know. Uh, I think I heard briefly about it. I think one of the big issues was that the original puzzle maker for the first six games died, and then after that, uh, um, in Catria, Layton, people were not super jazzed with the puzzles because they weren't as good. And um, I think it got an anime, 50 episodes, that was relatively sex successful in Japan. But, yeah. Like, but Layton kind of, like, now that it's not the DS era, and that was, like, the best possible platform for the kind of game Layton is, mm. um, and the fact that they took a long time to localize, the buzz just kind of died down a lot. Um and uh, yeah, I think it's also sort of in a bit of a limbo because uh, I don't think Catria Layton took off like they wanted it to. Uh, uh, yeah, every level fran every level five franchise is in a limbo except Yokai Watch with Y Academy. And so like Inazuma Eleven especially is just I feel so bad for fans of that series. Uh, okay, so I guess the other kind of big thing that happened this week is um for the first time in like thirty forty years I think uh. The Peanuts Halloween special is not airing on ABC. It'll be an Apple TV streaming exclusive. You know, that platform everybody has. <laughs> Apple TV <laughs> is the most, like... Uh, I don't know. I can't... <laughs> For some reason, of like, every single streaming service. Except, like, maybe, like, stuff like Quibi that's not even, like... Well, yeah. we all know <laughs> what happened to Quibi. Fucking Quibi. But, like, whenever I see, like... Uh, exclusively streaming on Apple TV. I that that's like the I don't know for some reason Apple TV that just sounds so cheap. Mm -hmm. I, I associate that with like like what is it like like a new like product like a new like thing you have yeah you have to buy an Apple TV. I didn't TV. realize Apple TV was a streaming service. I thought it was kind of like a hosting. Well, that, those are kind of the same thing. I don't know fuck about streaming services. Like an iTunes. <laughs> It's like yeah. the uh, same with like Apple Arcade. I'm like, this phone yeah, well, I don't know what the like Angry Birds. Uh, <laughs> so I Apple, I, I I feel like you know on Apple TV. I feel like the only reason the show Central Park didn't do very good is because it was fucking shoved on like Apple TV. I feel like that show would have done better literally anywhere else. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that could have been on like Hulu. People would have watched it if it was on Hulu. Mm-hmm. Because because it's a pretty decent show. It just nobody talked about it because it was on fucking Apple TV. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> I feel like uh, they might just, like, when this kind of stuff happens, they just jump at the chance to get, like, the first streaming service they can. That'll be, like, a reasonable deal, and so, like, it ends up on one that's what, least optimal, and then it, like, fades. Something like that. I don't know. I I'm, I totally know how business works. But yeah, uh, the Peanuts thing, um, uh, this is apparently a big deal for, like, a lot of people, because I've heard that, uh, the Peanuts Halloween special is, like, a big thing for, like, a lot of low-income families, like, watching that. And, like, yeah. now that it's locked by this, it's, I don't know, it feels shitty to, like, lock, so it feels like oh, the, yeah. it's kind of a big deal for a lot of low-income families, like, behind a streaming service. I don't know. That, that reminds me of the same thing happening with, like, Sesame Street, where the new episodes mm -hmm. are exclusive for a, a period of time to HBO Max, and it really is kind of a punch to the gut, because Sesame Street... But, like, its whole reason for existence was to give low-income families and, like, minority neighbors, well, uh, like, affordable education. I'm gonna give Sesame Street a bit of a break here because they literally had to do it. Like, the show would have died oh, wait, if they didn't. Did yeah, no, wait, the show... Really? Yeah, the show was, like, running out of money because, like, the merch wasn't selling as good. They really? literally... Yeah, they literally had to, like, make a deal or the show would have died. It's a bit of, like... Because people often, like, share the headline only and nothing else, but the actual story is uh, merch for the show wasn't selling as good. And if they didn't, like, cut a deal with HBO Max for new episodes to air first on HBO Max, then, uh, it would have just died completely. Oh, wow. I had no idea. I mean, I kind of mm. thought it was still doing as well as ever. I mean, it's Sesame no. Street. Yeah. And uh, I think Abby Kadabi is, like, really popular or something. Wow, so, I just really did not So the only, that. like, thing with it is, like, new episodes air first on HBO Max, but, like, it still airs for free on, like, PBS. Yeah. 
Mm -hmm. I, I didn't know that it comes on later, but it's just like, I don't know, it still felt scummy, but yeah. Yeah, it, it, it is definitely like a weird, like, when you hear that at first, you're like, whoa, what's, what's, what's going on there? But, you know, they do have the thing where, and, and like, also, there's like so many episodes you could That's rerun true. that are kind of timeless. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's like, what, 40 years worth, so. Yeah, it was a oh, ton. 50 years, they just had the anniversary. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, what was that? What were we talking? Peanuts. Yeah, we're just talking yeah, about like, we're peanuts. Off a little bit. Well, I I feel like there's not much to talk about with that. It just kind of brings it to like a larger point about streaming services and like stuff. Like it leads to stuff like oh, low income families can't watch like a thing that they like to watch anymore because streaming. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's just a problem. Like everything's on streaming or cable TV, and so like you know, what are these? What are these people who can't afford to do? There's just kind of, t t <laughs> we've. I think this is like not a hot take, but there's way too many fucking streaming services. One of them's gonna burst eventually. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I think like eventually they're all gonna like like shit themselves, and everything's gonna go to Netflix. Maybe Hulu will stick around. Guys, so. hold on. Wait, hold on. But Waxus is gonna save us. Everything's just gonna go to Waxus. Oh my god, that's right. What the hell is Waxus? <laughs> it's Butch oh, Hartman's <laughs> streaming service. He's totally oh. making. Oh yeah, that's yeah. right. This ain't gotta be no yeah. Noog network. <laughs> I love, I love the things he does when he tries to advertise, like, like his fucking Oaxus, and he puts images of like the Avengers, like on it, like implied he's gonna somehow get the rights oh, to the okay. Avengers to put on his streaming service. Oh, oh okay, it's Oaxus. I thought you said like the Waxist, and I'm like, what is this, Madame Tussauds Museum department? I'm like, <sighs> no, uh, oh. Maybe yeah. Advertise Captain America reading the Bible. That that I wouldn't be surprised. I feel like it could happen. I mean that you could go off on a whole tangent about like how superheroes turn into like the opposite of what it was because now it's very like corporate. But that's that's a topic for not this podcast probably. Mm -hmm. You can there's probably papers on it. Uh huh. All right. Uh, what what well, what else? Uh, well, I wrote in our notes the Smurfs question mark apparently question oh. mark. <laughs> Did oh, they release everybody. anything on it? Besides... Everybody, <laughs> listen up. New Smurfs coming 2021. A new Smurfs cartoon. The first animated Smurfs cartoon series since the 80s. Yeah. That's... Well, and then the they're going to do a trailer where they pop out of the grave and they sign an exclusivity deal. <laughs> <at Netflix. laughs> and they talk about their first lines. Oh. <laughs> and there's no originality in Hollywood. Okay. I was so I... And then they're gonna really smurf splain. This is never smurf splainy. That's gonna smurf. Yeah. Oh my gosh. And then um, that, then the smurf is gonna be a smurfit boss. Yeah, it's smurf Vader Ginsburg. <laughs> smurf, smurf smurfette's gonna be like toxic masculinity and like deck brainy in the head. Yes. Um. But yeah. I. Um. There was a trailer release for it like a week ago, and nobody talked about it. Can't believe that the Smurf heads have not been coming out of the woodwork. <laughs> Wait, I thought it was just like that thirty second preview that like one of you posted like two hours. Thirty ago. seconds yeah. is way too generous. It's sixteen seconds long. Yeah, okay. there's like one but, yeah. teaser of it. Um, long enough I think, to drive. I think the only info on it is that it's gonna air in America on Nickelodeon. Mm. Um, and it's gonna have the animation from the the most recent movie. The animated one. Can the I Lost just village. can I just say that the the contents of the sixteen seconds trailer are also like the most nothing thing in the world. It's like the most basic cartoon gag. Like, oh, it's a president and it explodes, and that's it. That's the joke. <laughs> this is like that's, this, that's jokey. Smurf. It's gonna be it's so like... revolutionary. <laughs> really, it's the Smurfs in the modern age. This is what we need right now. You know, this is what our nation. This is, this is what our nation. It's gonna needs. bring us together. The Smurfs saved twenty twenty. I'm sorry, twenty twenty one. Wait, was yeah. it 2020 or 2021? Uh, who the hell uh, knows? Next year. Okay. <laughs> um. So yeah, I mean, I feel like I have a weird. I don't. I don't talk about this a lot, but I do. I have like sort of a close relationship with Smurf family. Uh huh. Um, yeah. I remember like the first one came out. I think I saw that in the movie theater. Um, and I watched Smurfs too in the movie theater. Oh. Uh <laughs> uh <laughs> See, you're shrinking. Why are you shrinking? I'm um, what? I'm you're shrinking. shrinking. Why? Yeah, why are you shrinking? You're turning blue. 
I'm turning blue on three apples high. Uh, that's that's, that's Soupy Smurf. Oh, this you know this might be, and I, I don't say this lightly. This could turn out to be the most faithful and best Smurfs product to be released in the past thirty years. All right, I said it. That is a bold statement, but maybe you're right. You're the Smurf expert. I mean, I know the bar is pretty high with with Hank Azaria, Gargamel, and the Protocol. <laughs> <laughs> is that what happened in the second movie? <laughs> That's in the first one, I think. Oh, I, I, I don't dark remember and that. Terrible magic in there. I like walked that. out of a porta potty. Um. <laughs> uh, come on, you, none of you have anything to say about the Smurfs? No! Do you, don't you know any? Like can you name pink, any Smurfs? Like, this Hank Azaria looks like he's in constant pain. <laughs> well, I guess that's what happens when you're in the first Smurfs movie. Well, I do really like the plot from the first Smurfs movie, where the Smurfs come to New York and they meet up with an advertising <laughs> manager, and then he gets inspired by the Smurfs because they actually make it the blue moon, and then he gets promoted, and then he goes, I don't want a bunch of little people running around my house, and then the wife yeah, puts well, a fan to her lying. stomach and looks, like, offended. I think they're lying. I've been to Manhattan my entire life. Like a million times, I, I saw no Smurfs. I saw no Alvin and the Chipmunks. Oh wait, is that in New York? I don't know <laughs> where they all are. Oh, that's what's all gonna lead to. Like all the live action cartoon movies are all gonna meet up in New York and to be like Yogi meets the Smurfs and Alvin and the Chipmunks, and they gotta like stop like Dick, uh, who's like the cartoon villain for like this movie. Um, but you almost say Dick Dastardly. Yeah, I almost said Dick Dastardly. Dick. Yeah, does that be Dick Dastardly again? Why not? Who cares? <laughs> uh, yeah. I hope they have Gutsy Smurf. Remember Gutsy Smurf? Uh, um, I can name like uh, two Smurfs. Name two Smurfs. Okay. Papa Smurf? Brandy Smurf? Yep. <laughs> um, you did it! You can name more than that. <laughs> come on, come on. You gotta name well, two more. Well, said, what about the I'm... Emo Smurfs from the Smurfs too? <laughs> oh, I don't, I don't freaking... <laughs> emo Smurf? Are they, what are they called? Emo-y? I don't... I, I mean, yeah, I don't remember. I, I, my Smurfs exposure is a terrible. <laughs> Kitty Smurf, Dixie Smurf, Smurf Incidental <laughs> Number Eight, Cranky Smurf, Cranky Smurf, <laughs> Cranky Smurf. Wait, is Cranky Smurf an actual sur uh, Smurf? Yeah. Uh, there's Grouchy. Close enough. I love Smurf Incidental Eight. <laughs> Smurf Incidental. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, King K Smurf. I, I don't know. I guess I don't have much to say about the Smurfs. I, I, guess, I, <laughs> I guess we could talk about, like, uh, that extends, like, the Nickelodeon's, like, lineup, which is all just old, like, nothing new. <laughs> it's just, like, reboots of things. What about Al? The direction everybody's going in now, isn't it? Besides, like, all the original cartoons end up, like, like you know, like, Kipo and Owl House and stuff like that are all, I mean, like, on just TV. Wait, no, Kipo's not on TV. I, I don't know. Because, uh, okay, so they released an ad for, like, their new stuff, and about half of it is just old stuff. There's uh, Camp Coral, which is Spongebob. There's the Rugrats reboot, which is just, there was actually our first look at that in general. And there's that one kid from the comics. I don't know his fucking name. I don't care. Big Nate. Big Nate, yeah. That's news. We should Hi, talk about Nate. that. What do we think about the CGI Rugrats? I don't, Ugh, know. I don't know. They look fine. <laughs> the Rugrats, yeah. and they're in CG. Uh, honestly, when I first... They first announced that like a year ago or something. They're, they're like, we're gonna have like a new like they. I think they said like live action CGI Rugrats. Yeah. Already, something like that. And the first image that pops in your head when you hear those words is like the most disgusting. Like, because I mean, you know, class classy Shufo cartoons. They're not like. I and mean, like they they look, they're ugly. They don't look bad, but they're like really. Yeah. They have like an ugly look to them. And just imagining that in CGI, I could only imagine just the most, like, grotesque, like, like weird, like, how is Tommy Pickles going to look in 3D? Like, are, are we, is it going to be like a Wii game? Is it going to be like the Wobs of Doom graphics or something? Um, but, you know, it looks, no, it looks, it looks all right. I, mean, I it's weird because it's hard to, like, I feel like I should have an opinion on this. Like, these are, like, all baby shows. I don't, <laughs> I'm a hot take about baby <laughs> shows. Are doing, like, the Baby Shark show or... Am I like? I think, I, yeah. Oh, that's true. That's real. Like I don't. Oh, yeah. like, I've, I've seen Baby Shark show merchandise in my. With, store, with so. like, with like Camp Coral, beyond like the moral implications. That's not real, Rosa. Don't post that. Beyond like, you know 
<laughs> yeah, no. uh, I need to put this on screen. Hold on. Uh, beyond the like, moral implications of Camp Coral that we don't have the full story on, uh, I don't care. It's a fucking baby show for SpongeBob. It's like a baby. I don't care. It's a show for like yeah. four year olds. I'm 21 years old. I can't have a hot take about a show for toddlers. I mean, I only watch shows for babies, so. And I'm Dude, a goose. You still are there. Camp right, uh, Coral is, is such a like. There's so much like about it right now so much discussion and i feel like it's the kind of thing where once it's like aired that's gonna drop off so fast yeah i'm even gonna remember it's uh, like yeah. so quick quick, <laughs> quick explanation this is an image of to uh, uh chucky that a lot of articles use when announcing this that isn't a real image it is it's just a fake one like an artist made this look better than the real one ah uh, they'll put the real one on screen too to like to give like yeah, a comparison i've seen nothing because uh, the real one is like like it's like they like a lot of recent CGI has been able to do, or like it looks like it's pretty faithful to the, like the two D art, but it's just yeah. like Here's, textured. Oh my god, it's huge! Uh, there's Big Nate too, everyone's <laughs> favorite character. I'm I was shocked when I saw Big Nate because like I remember I, I, reading those. I'm I'm really dating myself as a Zoomer now. Um, but <laughs> yeah, that series has been over for a few years, I think. I like you know, so I'm surprised that it's getting a cartoon now. But yeah, cool, cool, I guess. Yep. Big yeah. Nate. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Big uh, Nate was like one of those like book series that came out a lot in like mid two thousands, early oh no, real more like early twenty tens, since Diary of a Wimpy Kid that were basically trying to be the same thing. There are a few of them around that time. Yeah, if there's uh, one there's this one thing I give Cap Coral as a twenty one year old who just doesn't care about like a show for four year olds. It, it is a very faithful adaptation of the art style. That's that's about it. Yeah, they look yeah. I mean they look like they'll still push. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, they did try to. They had some for movie theaters. You're right. Oh, sure. that's right. They were weren't they gonna sell like plushies or something at the movie theaters for Sponge on the Run, or did yeah. I like completely? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, you could go on about like all the like tie-ins they had made for Sponge on the Run that got like fucked over because of the virus. Well, I, how did it do? Did it like sell on streaming and stuff? Well, I know it was in theaters it, in Canada. No, it didn't. It hasn't come out on the stream. Yeah, Wait. much to my dismay. It came out in, like, China, I think. It came oh. out in Canada uh, for, like, a week. I thought yeah. it came out, like, everywhere except America. I thought it was, like... <clears throat> well, I guess not. I think they were planning to do that, but I don't know if it's actually happened yet, because I think the only rips of it are still from, like, like movie theater camera yeah. rips. Oh, yeah, Canada. they did not think the implications of, like, releasing the movie super early through, like, they just did not take into account people with pirate. Uh, yeah. So, like... I, let's see, if we can like shift to Sponge of the Run real quick, because I think that's a good transition to that. Um, Sponge of the Run's release has been a disaster. Uh, they so you know with like a Scoob and like Trolls World Tour, they kind of like just like okay, theaters aren't happening. Just put these on a streaming service. Like they kind of just fessed up. They did get delayed, but not by too much. They waited till like the week before Sponge of the Run was supposed to come out to like inner like say it was going to a streaming service. It got delayed like three months. Yeah, they delayed it a lot. There, I, there's probably like four different release dates for this movie. Yeah, that you could find. And uh, it's I think the thing is, it's coming to like what is it, Peacock Plus or whatever in America, and then Netflix, <laughs> and then Netflix everywhere else. And it's like, well, time to like get a VPN. I'm not fucking getting Peacock Plus just to watch Sponge Literally, on the Run. Literally, what is Peacock Plus? I have never heard of this until right now at this exact moment in time. So it's NBC. like a peacock, and they sort of like glued on like a plus sima onto it. <laughs> Damn! Well, Rose has got it. It's it's the Office streaming service. That's what it's that's what it's gonna be called when it comes out. The streaming service that has the Office. I'm not I'm not getting I, I, I give me a I'll just get a VPN to watch Sponge of the Run. I'm not fucking getting the yeah, Peacock yeah. Plus just for this movie. <laughs> hmm. Such a yeah. The release of this is such a like sloppy like. We have to sap as much money out of SpongeBob as we can. Like we need, like we need a plan. We can't just like drop it. We have to like, you know, this needs to be on like Peacock Plus. This needs to be in theaters. It needs to be this. Just to a point where it's like, it, it's weird. It's just weird. Yeah, they did a so because uh, Pixar is also putting Soul on Disney Plus now. It's not behind like a price well like Mulan. I think Mulan probably did fucking terrible. <laughs> Um, oh yeah, it kind of deserves to. It did, it did. Yeah. But uh, Saul's just been putting on Disney Plus, which is. When was Saul supposed to come out originally? I like. I think. About it. 
I think they only delayed it like a a week or so. Like it was, I think it's pretty close to when it was supposed to come out. Was this supposed to be this year? I thought it was next. Yeah, year. yeah, it was this year. It was still this oh. year. I I like forgot everything that's supposed to be this year because like movies like instantly evaporated from my brain as, I can... as soon as all the theaters shut down. But I think like so I'm gonna. I think Sonic the Hedgehog is probably gonna end up winning like movie of the year or something. Okay, so yeah, it didn't get it, 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 it didn't get delayed too bad. It was supposed to come out in November, and now it's coming to Disney Plus in December instead. Oh, okay, that's not yeah, that's okay then. And I I I, I think Disney's gonna like take the L eventually and do that with like everything they have like they're holding because they're they're gonna have to like release their stupid fucking Black Widow movie eventually, and I don't think they could pay well that one either. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Why do they? Oh, the Black Widow movie is such a weird, like... Can I, I just say, I as... I can't spoil too much. I'm as, not really... Oh, go on, Rosa. So, sorry. Oh, you I'm go not first. I'm really interested in watching a movie about a tree. <laughs> <laughs> the tree? A tree? A Black Widow is a spider, Rosa. I think you're thinking of a willow. I mean, it's Scarlett Johansson. I think she's really well known for, at, for acting skills of, like, being a tree. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, yeah. Like, she says she could play anyone, and yet she only knows how to play a tree. You know, uh, I don't know, Black Widow's weird to me, because, you know, as, like, a girl, you know, the whole thing, Black Widow's whole thing is she's the girl hero, and, like, we as women are supposed to respect another fellow woman. I don't give a shit. I, I mean, they, kinda, they did that with Captain Marvel, except they added yeah. a propaganda to it. I, I, I would yeah. I would have been more interested in literally any other Marvel girl. They could have made, like, the Mantis movie, I've been more excited. They could have made the Squirrel Girl movie. Could have yeah. made the Squirrel Girl movie. I I yeah. I wonder if they'll do Miss Mar. Who's who's like the stretchy lady? That's Miss Marvel, right? Is it? I don't I don't, I don't know. I don't, I don't really DC? know. About the, uh, is that the DC woman? Oh yeah, that's uh, the, that's a stretchy girl, Miss Marvel. Uh, I I see a movie about her. I don't I don't care about <laughs> Black Widow at all. I uh, and even like from like the perspective of like if you think of like people who like are fans of like the Marvel movies characters, like you know I'm like I've watched most of them. It's, it's it was such a weird decision because um uh Avengers Endgame spoiler spoilers for like the highest grossing movie of all time that everyone has seen who wants to see it um but like um it's weird that they the way they did like so they kill off Black Widow and then they announce they're doing a movie about Black Widow and it, it's just weird like to do that like. Why didn't you give her a movie before you killed her off? Like, wouldn't that have made it more like people would have gotten more invested and cared about that more? I think the like, MCU they had like, I think they had the Black Widow movie planned like long before Endgame came out. Like they right. they would release periodically like entire movie timelines that span for like five years. So I'm pretty sure this was like announced stealthily. Can I uh, can I be blunt? I just don't think they gave a shit about Black Widow. <laughs> <laughs> they just like yeah, maybe, I, it maybe, like not. maybe I'm giving them too much credit. They they only I think I think the only reason they're doing Black Widow now is they finally got like backflash for not giving any focus to the woman. Go go on, Rosa. I was gonna say it's sort of like on the wall, and like a lot of her plots are just really tied to like other heroes, and then mm. like a really unimportant one. I think I feel like they sort of had her killed off because like people could really. Like, I guess we'll care more about, like, what's his face? Hawkeye. 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 Yeah. That, that, yeah, that's what it felt like. It was like, who can we afford to kill? Yeah, I was gonna say, watching that <laughs> scene, I'm like, oh man, I wonder which one of these expendable heroes they're gonna kill off. <laughs> and then, didn't they just like, staff Hawkeye out of a movie to put him on, like, Disney Plus or something or some? Yeah, yeah. it's even like a Disney Plus thing. Uh, I guess. Is it. Um, what was that say? This is Marvel. Punishing Black Widow for not having kids. Oh my god. Oh. Uh, I guess I guess speaking of Marvel, um uh there's like rumors about like what the next Spider Man movie's gonna be like and if it, it is oh, like yeah. like a multiverse thing, it's gonna be so funny because it's just gonna be Spider Verse but not as good. It's just gonna be Spider Verse, but they're all three adult white guys. Yeah, because oh, no, sorry, what two adult yeah. white guys and one teenage white guy? A lot of variety. Space Jam or Marvel movies. <laughs> because the yeah, whole thing. Somebody asked about the real Spider Verse too, and I think didn't they delay it? Uh, I I probably got delayed a bit. Everything uh, yeah, got I think delayed. It, now it's twenty twenty two. I think. But uh, 
the thing about spider verse i'm not the first person to bring this up the whole point of like it's like spider cast was the point of the movie was anyone could be a hero like anyone could be spider-man that's why there was like a large variety of like spider people in the movie right and i feel like just having like three like you know like we said adult white dudes is like well what does this mean besides just fan service <laughs> Yeah, well, yeah, I th I think that's the thing where like, um, it is like a pretty fan service thing, and I think of that like you know, it's like you know whatever like you have like the live action Spider Mans and like I I don't it's probably I don't even know how big of a thing it would be. It I, probably would be for like the sector that grew up with those right. Movies. I, I think it could like, be fine in like a cute scene or something like that, but they're gonna make a whole movie about that. Like... I, I, yeah, that, well, that's a thing. I'm not sure. Like, I think that there's been like they said like they're gonna have like Andrew Garfield and Tobey Maguire, but I don't know if like that's what the whole movie is gonna be necessarily. Uh -huh. I hope not. It, that would be it, like. It, yeah, it seems it to me. It feels like something that would be best done if they had like like a pretty like oh look at this like cool scene. Um. But not really like focus the whole movie. I I because I feel like the movie's was is gonna be more like Doctor Strange and Spider Man. Yeah. yeah. Right. I I do feel like in general, if that is like the main focus of that movie, I think it's I think it's a little fucked in like the long run because like it'll be like a thing that gets talked about for like a month. But I don't think if they try to do like a live action Spider Verse, it would have the impact <sighs> of the. <laughs> I the one. It would have the impact of like what the animated one was like what, the biggest, where it was like the biggest thing in the world for like a long time. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, you know, those the live action Spider Mans are pretty popular, and yeah. I think there are a lot right. of people who seen those and would probably be like, I it it makes some good like. Oh, you know when like the trailer drops, it's gonna be like a great like trailer drop thing. Yeah, I know? feel like that's like the only reason they're doing it. <laughs> it's gonna be a trailer drop. Everybody goes nuts moment. But like, yeah, I, I can see why they're doing it. I'm not saying nobody's like attached to those Spider Men, but I I don't mm. know if it can really hold up a, a whole movie substance wise. Yeah. Plus, like, also again, like Spider Verse was also not just about like the Spider-Man story, but it was also a big story for, like, its place in animation and new mm. creating, using new techniques. Yeah. And, like, really just, like, combining, like, 2D methods and with 3D. I mean, like, I, I think, like, the impact Spider-Verse had, like, on animated movies is something we're probably going to end up seeing eventually. Like, we're still going to get to that point. Mm -hmm. Oh, definitely. I mean, it deserves it, I think. It's, mm. it's definitely defining... No, I think I th I think Spider Verse doing as well as it did is probably gonna shake up a lot of like things in the animation world. Yeah. Hopefully, yeah. Uh, uh, this is the last thing we talk about before we like uh, get to like what we played or watched this week. Uh, oh yeah, what do we all think of <laughs> what do we all think of the Bob's Burgers movie being a thing? Um, oh, I <laughs> I think it's so funny um, because like I I go to like Comic Con I think like for a few years. Um, and had the digital event a few months ago, and like every year for like the past like three or four years, like the Bob's Burgers panel, they've always said like, "Oh yeah, we're working on a movie, by the way." Um, yeah. Anyway, and they like haven't been able to show anything about it, and like this year they were like, "Oh yeah, we have these backgrounds that we drew for the Bob's Burgers movie," and let me tell you, they, these these really look beautiful, uh, but we can't really show that yet, and it's just so. It's it's weird. Like, I, why? Like, it was going to come out this year yeah, at yeah. some point. So it must be like at some point where they could show something from it or share any kind of details at all. Yeah, because it's we, such an enigma right now. We haven't got like a single thing for the movie. Like, not not a single like screen from the movie or anything. Yeah. No like stills. They couldn't show a single background from the movie nothing no plot details because i'm curious what it's gonna look like because like i don't i don't know i don't know what it's gonna look. It's probably like i slightly probably like have more because whenever like cartoons get movies they usually have like more shading that's like one of the big things <laughs> right so. um yeah <laughs> are any thoughts on the bob's burgers movie uh see it i haven't watched bob's burgers since like around when it first came out i mean i remember liking it i just I haven't kept up mm -hmm. with it 
It's so weird. Like, what can they really make a movie about? Because, like, the thing about, like, Boss Burger is that, like, these characters are, like, have, like, very small, unambitious journey, and it's sort of just funny to look at. Now hear me out. I, I know what the plot's gonna be. Um, an evil CEO is gonna come to town and try to tear up the neighborhood, and then, uh, Eugene, uh, Gene and, uh, Gene and... Uh, <laughs> I forgot their names all the time. I feel like an idiot. I don't know. Louise and, and Tina? Uh, okay, uh, Gina and Louise are going to, like, become spies, like, secret agent spies, and then um, regular size Rudy's going to help them, like, behind the scenes, and then he's going to, like, uncover his mask, and he's going to speech about how he loved Louise the entire time, and they're going to kiss, and then... Uh, Gene... Hey, Arnold movie. <laughs> he hey, Arnold finds... movie. <laughs> ding, 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 ding! <laughs> you got the joke! <laughs> Yeah! Oh, I thought you were making a Lego movie joke. Like the plot of the I, movie I, is, the, not, is the task going to be placed under a giant dome. Hey, I was going to say that. I was going to say that. Like, the, the EPA. Like, someone's been, Mr. Fish Yoda keeps contaminating, like, the wharf. Um, and, and so they, the, the EPA comes in and, and, and um, places the, yeah, okay. And then Bob's going to step inside his burger shop and go, oh, it's going to zoom out into <laughs> some the whole dome. I, right. I, I think it's gonna have good music. Oh, probably. I, that's a prediction I have. The show has pretty good like musical numbers, and they. I I think it's gonna be a music. I'm assuming it's gonna be a musical. Uh okay. Uh I guess we can do the thing where we talk about what we watched or played this week. Uh, we're pretty late in, like we always do at this part. There actually was a lot to talk about this week because we missed two weeks. Um, like I guess we'll just do a one per person. What is the most interesting thing you watched or played this week? Uh, so you know, just just go for it. Whoever wants to go first. So I need time to think. Somebody else go first. Yeah, Ro Rosa usually has something. Rosa, what did you watch or play or read this week? You, you usually have something to talk about. The thing is, I have three things I want to talk about. All right, uh, what's, th what's the one you're most into? What were you most into this week? Okay. So, I guess in terms of this, I'll technically say two things, but, like, I guess in quick, I'll say, like, watch the first five episodes of Great Pretenders. Because, like, the less you know about it, the wild it gets. Okay. So that's what I'm going to say on that subject, but, uh, I think I watch. I can say Vampires vs. the Bronx for another time. Okay. No. Actually, okay, no, I'll talk about that. Kung Fu Panda next week. Okay, okay, because I can yeah. talk about Kung Fu Panda with you next week. Yeah, the yeah. Panda. Alright, uh, go, go on, Rosa. Talk about... What do you think about uh, okay. Vampires vs. the Bronx? So, it's... I guess to say, at least it's like a very cheesy, very corny movie in some way, but like, it's sort of just like, obviously a low budget. Like, it's not bad looking or anything, but obviously like, oh, it was a small production. It's recently, like, takes place in the Bronx, and you call, like, the main character named Miguel Martinez, and he's, like, called the little mayor, because, like, he's very, he interacts with his neighbors a lot, with the people of his, you know, people in his neighborhood, and he's, like, doing a little thing where, like, he's trying to do a block party for, like, a bodega for, like, his, for, bodega for his, like, father figure, Tony. You know, and it sort of like shows like it's the movie's like very on the nose about what it's about. Or like the vampires pretty much represent like gentrification in the area. It's like it's just very obvious. Uh, it's funny because you told me about this movie earlier, and I didn't know what a bodega actually was until you told me what it was. Because the only other time I heard the word bodega was an OKKO, and I assumed it was like... confused the whole time? <laughs> a little, like, I thought it was like a funny oh, word. For all 800 episodes of that show. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> Go on, Rosa. Yeah. Real uh, quick. I uh, don't digress a lot and say, like, Doris Bodega is not a real bodega. Unless it's in the corner of a building, it is not a bodega. That is like a little mini-mart. <laughs> Calling you out. Calling you out. Ian um, yeah. Jones Courtsy. Like, you know, you could do what I do, and I just thought Ian Jones Courtsy's name was J.G. Quintel. 
<laughs> yeah, it's sort of just very unknown about like what's it about. Where like it's sort of shown like throughout the movie that like li- like these vampires are sort of like buying up businesses and they sort of get replaced with like like businesses that are sort of like selling like gluten free or like the butter store where you get different variety of butter or <laughs> something is- like that. Butter. And then, like, it shows up where, like, uh, there's a lady, and they would sell, like, these little ice creams called Pobitas. At least that's how I'm feeling to call it. Where, like, they get, like, these little ice cream, these little cups, and they usually, like, little independent businesses, you know? And then they sort of get, like, uh, knocked out by, like, this ice cream shop coming in saying vegan ice cream. Or whatever. It's it's really just very on the nose. Well, it's... I guess what made me... Hmm? I was just say, uh, most monster movies are like that. Like the monster yeah. is like something. Like the monsters, like a, like I learned just this week that the monsters in Pacific Rim were like a metaphor for mobile global warming. I didn't think about yeah. that until like I saw quotes from the movie. I'm like, oh, that's really obvious. <laughs> yeah, and I guess I really wanted to see this movie because like I saw the commercial, like I saw the title. I was like, oh, that person should the Bronx. I live in the Bronx. And I checked the trailer, and I saw like the these two comedians, one of the two comedians, the Bodega Boys. Uh, I think his name was Deeth. Yeah, Deeth, who played as Kid Miro. He played as Kid Tony, like Tony, the guy who runs a Bodega, and is like the father figure. And it's like, oh, I'm interested because like they sort of talk a lot about like your experience living in the Bronx, and sort of just interesting. Oh, like he probably had like not any writing credits in it, or anything to do with the writing, but it's sort of just interesting, like. Ah, something about the Bronx, you know? Uh, it's just, like, very funny to see it. Like, yeah, it's totally did get some of the vibes of just, like, living in the Bronx. And, like, occasionally hearing the music you hear played in, like, bodegas and everything. It was, like, a little fun time for me. A little fun romp. That's good. Yeah. It's like, a, like a, almost a nostalgic kind of thing. Yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah, like, some locations they really recognize, which is probably different parts of the Bronx I haven't seen. But, like, it, honestly, I've seen, like, 161st, like, where Yankee Stadium was. And, like, oh, yeah, I guess that would be the area would get, like, that would get gentrified the most. All right, can I ask a question? Do they go to the Joker stairs in the movie? Uh, I'm not sure which one, which stairs it is. There's, like, a lot of stairs. No, the ones from the, ones from the, the Joker movie, where he, does the, where he does the funny dance. Do they go to that? No. I don't want to see it anymore. I don't care. I don't care what this movie is. <laughs> I, I don't really see that. That's like the last, I think that's the last time I visited the Bronx. I haven't been to the Bronx so much, just like the zoo. Yeah. I mean, there's just like a lot more to the Bronx and like, than like the tourist areas, like Yankee Stadium. I remember just like when I used to go to school around the area, there was like a bunch of these tourists like crowding the trains. Oh, God. Yeah, it was the worst. But, like, I, I guess I was sort of lucky because, like, the second stop was sort of just, like, Yankee Stadium, and then the rest of the day were, like, gone. But, like, it really sucks for you know living, like, downtown. Yeah. But, yeah. But, yeah, it was a little fun romp, and it's, like, really fun. I guess, it, like, if anyone who lived in the wrong wants to see it, like, go ahead, have fun. You know? All right. Uh, uh, Seep, Curb, did you watch or play at least one thing this week? Uh, well, I was, I, I, I thought, well, I did play a lot of Minecraft, but, um, I, our Minecraft stories are too long. <laughs> My first, I, I have to clarify for context that Rose and Ryan watched me play Minecraft for the first time. We did, like, yes. <laughs> um, but I also, I want to show my new favorite manga, Maguchan God of Destruction, in Shonen Jump. Uh, the only Shonen Jump manga I'm reading besides Mori King, which is bad. Don't read that. It's not very worth your time. <laughs> but um, it, I, it's it's no secret I'm a huge fan of Sergeant Frog, Sledge Karugan, so it's on it's on the fucking screen right now. So I think Maga Channel is basically made for me. It's like Karo, but there's none of the bad stuff in it, and it's like this really like adorable eldritch gods based on like sea creatures end up like they end up in like a rural town in Japan, and like the main one is this little octopus one eyed dude. And he's funny, and he talks like he talks like he's all powerful, but he he got like neutered, <laughs> so he can't really do much anymore. But he's adorable, and it's all about like his friendship with this girl Ruru, who's like 
kind of like she's kind of happy go lucky, but she's also kind of lonely. And so they're family, and it's cute. And I, I, it's really like it made me cry the last two weeks because it's oh, wholesome. Oh no! Awesome. <laughs> it's really good. Awesome. I think it was. It's it's more of like a slice of lifey uh thing. So if you're into a plot, that's that's not the manga for you. But um, it's like catered to me specifically. So I've been enjoying it a lot. I got a couple friends into it, um, because blobs are funny. Um, and that's like the only thing I care about in Shonen Jump, to be honest. I I've heard like. I have exactly like one friend who reads most of Shonen Jump, and I've heard that most of it's not that good. So, um, I don't know. Or like, I, I, like you know, I have friends that are into like some of the mainstream stuff also, but like I've heard like the um, the other stuff in it is like, eh. Or like Shonen, Shonen, Shonen jump off a bridge in. Oh my yeah. god! Okay, I don't know if it's that intense. <laughs> yeah, oh um, that's 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 my advertisement for the week unpaid. Um, there's a volume one coming out soon that I might buy, uh, one so you can tell I'm serious about how much I love Magu Chan Gone God of Destruction. Yeah. Um, okay, yeah, that that's it. Besides Minecraft, Minecraft is fun. I'm so I'm th- I'm better, <laughs> but it's fun. All right, I see. We actually we didn't talk about C- uh uh thieves, but uh that's fine. I, we talked about a lot. We I we think we talked about C enough like last time. It's fine. Uh, C- if Steve lost his meat. Uh, that's it. That's, oh that's, yeah, there that's, we go. Steve lost his meat. Uh, you see, did you watch or play anything this week? Post post the image of the Cabillion stream. Who? What? The Cabillion stream. The picture I sent you. Did you send me something? Is no, this like, the one in like this early, cat? Oh, like oh, the Bobby's World thing? Yeah, just put them in the... Yeah. Okay, Bobby's hold on. Bobby's World? Yeah, put it up. Hi, one, ladies! One, one second, hello, one second. Hello. Let me get Bobby hello, on screen. Hello. Uh, hello, hello, hello. Oh, hey, Bobby. It's <laughs> Halloween, Bobby. I watched Bobby's World Halloween special last night. Um, there it is. It's like... <laughs> And so, yeah, earlier today I found out that um, there is a Kabillion YouTube channel. Kabillion owns, like, Bobby's World property. They're the only ones who wanted it. Um, and, oh, Bobby's um, World has things still, like, under production that would require ownership of it. <laughs> they just rerun, like, 40-year-old episodes, not oh. 40, 30-year-old episodes of Bobby's World. Um, that's it. That's why I even know about Bobby's World. If it wasn't for that channel, I would not know what Bobby's World was because it has no sort of cultural relevance at all. I only know it from So, <laughs> can I point something out real fast? <laughs> on this, on this image of like Bobby's World, like YouTube stream, where like they're streaming Bobby doing the Omega Lol, uh, Twitter, tw- Twitch. Um, <laughs> um, they only have five yeah. bits. That's like the same amount of bits I would get as a streamer, like when I was streaming. Bobby's world was doing as good as I was. I think that's an accomplishment for yeah. you. I'll oh, just wait till you see the Hero 108 streams, how much clout those get. What is, you know? I don't know what that is. <laughs> so that, yeah. that says a lot. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah. Um, <laughs> that's really all I have to bring up, I guess. I, 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 guess, I guess there's something to the fact that Bobby's world as a property only exists to like make me... Like, the official thing that owns Bobby world... The only reason thing they do with Bobby is make fucking memes of Bobby's world now. Oh yeah, look up like the Kabillion YouTube channel. Look up like the memes that they do for Bobby's world. There's like a um, there's like a video where like Bobby's like going through this Halloween thing, and then like they play spooky, scary skeletons at the end. There's like a video oh, like yeah. the dog dancing oh. when like called when you can't go outside, and it's like the dog dancing the Animal Crossing music. <laughs> yeah, um, this is official Bobby's world. For promotional material now this is this is a part of its history a part of its legacy Damn. <laughs> bobby's world is real mean bait yeah and you know who Steve, voices Steve, you, should audition, you should you should audition to voice bobby in the in the inevitable bobby's world reboot. bobby's what would that be called bobby's new bobby's world? universe bobby no. bobby's universe future bobby universe, <laughs> universe future it's my world and we're living in it oh <laughs> Bob, Bobby, Bobby Murphy's Law. Um, <laughs> Doofus, because because the uncle's voice actor like died, they can replace the uncle with Doofenshmirtz. Yeah. I, I, you know what about the uncle's voice actor, right? What else? What else? Uh he played uh, Doctor Pig. <laughs> <laughs> 
from a barnyard. I recognize uh, when I watch like one episode of Bobby's World. Actually, I do have one thing to say about that. That's the thing I'm going to talk about this for this week. But uh, they did a Ducktales episode about Darkwing Duck, and uh, they brought some of the villains back, like about like four of them, and all of them have their old voice actors, except uh, Germa. Oh, no, Germa, <laughs> except the <laughs> one that uh, that Doctor Pig's voice actor played. I feel bad forgetting his name and calling him Doctor Pig's voice actor, but him. Uh, they brought his character back, but he's the only one that doesn't speak in the episode. They made him kind of like, because he's a plant-based villain, he's the, my three sons one. So he's kind of like withered out and doesn't speak, and I thought that was in a, I, that was an interesting way to tackle that. I'm glad they didn't, re I think it was nice for them not to replace it. T Tino and Sana was the name. Tino and Sana, okay. Yeah, he died recently in, in uh, 2017, mm -hmm. so it wasn't too long ago, yeah. I like how he keeps saying Dr. Pig, too. Specifically, Dr. Pig. <laughs> the doctor, specifically. Uh, it's like Dr. Mario, they're going to turn it into a separate pig character. Cause Dr. Pig from Barnyard, by the way. I hope everyone knows that Dr. Pig is the pig from Barnyard. I, I... Dr. Pig, now in Smash Bros. So, uh, oh, the, na, 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 na. The, thing, the thing I played this week uh, that I think would be interesting to talk about is uh, Jackbox... <laughs> Jackbox, Jackbox uh, 7 came out and I want to say uh, two of the new ones they introduced I think are some of the best best games they put in Jackbox literally ever um, I think uh, Champed Up and Talking Points are like two of like two like all-star Jackbox and, like ones like I'd play almost every session if we did one like the role models of the new pack yeah cause, uh, so yeah those two are the big ones I think they are, are the absolute best uh Quiplash, the new one. Quiplash is like a safe, like, Jackbox game. So, like, it's never going to be, like, a bad time playing that. But I think what puts this Quiplash over the last one is the final Quip is actually fun to do. I didn't really like uh, the film the blank kind of, our acronyms one in the past oh, yeah, because I think a few times with the uh, old ones, especially, like, I think we got a comic strip. I remember we were playing once in that we ended up, like, not liking it and it just killed yeah. the whole mood because some of the prompts were not. So, yeah, I think it does individualize prompts now, right? Uh, maybe. Uh, and then, um, Devils in the Details, I think is fun, but there's a, but it's very loud and, like, talk, it's very different from, like, most Jackbox games. I would say, like, it's not like, I, I don't understand, it's not like a like a lot of, it's like a WarioWare kind of mini game. I would say. Yeah. I thought it was pretty good. And then, uh, I thought whatever the last one is, like, the trivia game, I forgot what it's called, the Owl Reading Fun Time that that's the worst one that's the only one i got to play so I, far i i don't love it. it's all right but yeah those are my thoughts it's too, it's too broad i think hmm. yeah it compares you know a lot when you feel like it would have been better if you done like custom prompts that a friend group would know yeah the custom prompts was definitely a good idea because like most when i the one round that i played like barely anybody got any answers unless it was like ridiculously easy so mm -hmm. Yeah. A lot of us were just like spouting inside jokes because, like, that's what you do for Jackbox. But yeah, yeah. so champed up and talking points are like two like top tier Jackbox games, and I imagine those are like ones I play a lot. But yeah, uh, that's it for Jackbox. I don't have much to say; they're just fun games. Uh, I guess now we have time for like two or three questions. So, um, yeah, yeah. this is the part of the show. Man. This is the part of the funny show where you comment a question in chat, and then we'll read it off, and then we'll answer the question. Uh, so you know, go crazy. Yeah, because you haven't heard enough of my opinions tonight. Uh, <laughs> favorite Halloween candy can be more than one. Reese's. Mm, Halloween Hello? candy? Yeah, Halloween mm. candy. What was it like your favorite candy get when you were like trick or treating? Been a long time since I ate any candy. I I love the really specific like, not even specific, just like really like generic like i don't know what it would even be it would just be like you just get like this chocolate that was shaped like a pumpkin <laughs> i don't know where those come from but i always love those because like can you ban I, live yeah i won't ban live uh when i was a kid <laughs> my two favorites were either uh three musketeers or like the twizzlers but like specifically the ones that were like green blue and purple those twizzlers were my favorite to get i've never seen those Root bear with the blue licorice come on. Uh, what about you, Rosa? What was your favorite Halloween candy to get? Um, I would say it's probably those hard Jolly Rancher candies. Ooh. Alright, I'm gonna... I'm gonna flip the script, actually. Like oh, god. 
I'm gonna flip the script actually. I feel like we haven't like, you know, had a controversy in a while. What is the worst Halloween candy to get? I don't know. Fucking pretzels. <laughs> Ew, toothpaste and raisins. I think maybe just like the generic McDonald's cookies. What? You got, you got McDonald's cookies on Halloween? <laughs> like not like not like the good ones. Like these rare McDonald's cookies character cookie and they were so what? pretty bland oh okay are you talking about <laughs> wait halloween. on halloween what are you yeah, talking about what McDonald's in my era used to do that i don't even know what a rare mcdonald's cookie is <laughs> <laughs> don't you know you need to collect them the rare the one Rosa tall tale if i ever heard one uh like, you, you don't know about it there's a reason why they don't sell it <laughs> <laughs> uh my two big ones i didn't like any as a kid where uh, I didn't like candy corn, but I could like tolerate it. But like the pumpkin candy corn stuff, I fucking hated getting. That's the same thing. Uh, yeah, I guess I guess I just hate candy corn. Is I hate candy corn. Uh, <laughs> I, I like it actually. I'm like a freak. <laughs> you're like you're like a freak. Yeah, I wish pumpkins. I wish pumpkins actually tasted like candy corn in real life. Biggest, see, biggest candy corn fan. And I, and I also <laughs> didn't like uh, Whoppers, Almond Joys, or uh, Dots very much. Why is Ronald wearing hipster glasses? He put the picture of the rare McDonald's cookies on screen. Let me look up. There's like a hipster Ronald. Who is that? <laughs> Who's it? Who's it? Uh, oh, I... In between the two grimaces. What? what oh, these <laughs> These are the rare McDonald's cookies. Hold on. Let me put Rose's rare McDonald's cookies on screen. Is that DDD? What is that? Well, I, I hope it's DDD. <laughs> are there common McDonald's cookies? <laughs> <laughs> Can you buy them in packs at your nearest, uh, nearest local retail store? <laughs> the blind box McDonald's cookies? There they are. Here's the rare McDonald's cookies. Looks like Kylo Ren, that Ronald McDonald. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why. No, no, no. The one on the top left, that's like, that looks like that's Finn Wolfhard in, in It Chapter One. That's what it looks <laughs> like in the movie. Skywalker comes a lot of contribution. I think as a kid, like Halloween candy, I, I skewed towards gummy stuff mostly. I really like getting like gummy stuff, like Twizzlers or like gummy worms, or, like the gummy, like. Mm -hmm. Eyeballs or like vampire teeth kind of stuff. For, for me, I feel like when it's not Halloween, I usually prefer that. But when it is Halloween, that's like my chocolate period. Mm. That's that's because I feel like the chocolate companies really like love doing Halloween things. Um, oh, chocolate! Our past oh, chocolate, <laughs> chocolate. The, uh, <laughs> the uh, past few uh. years, uh. We've done Halloween in our house. Uh, we got like one kid to come, and then we had like a full bag of candy left. And I, I, I don't even. We're probably gonna get less. We're gonna get less than one kid this year, probably. Oh yeah, I think we're just we're not putting candy out this year, pretty much. It's like been getting better and better every year, and we're like, just like screw it. Mm. <laughs> no, no candy. I just want to have yeah. a bag of candy. I don't care about the kids. Yeah, I'm. Go I'm gonna go to like. <laughs> I'm like go to like Walgreens. Fuck them kids. I mean, I work. I work in a retail store now, where like I've seen more candy bars than I ever knew existed. Like I've never heard of half of these brands that we sell in my store. So. They're are, they're discounted on like Halloween, right? I'm are they? Sure. I I don't know. I think like, like Halloween, all I'm like, like I dread this time of year because the Halloween aisle is like a complete mess. I walk in and it's just like everything on the floor. So oh, now man. I hate Halloween more than I used to. Uh. Um, but in terms of, like, least favorite candy, I don't really have one. I mean, I wasn't too much of a mint person ever, I guess, but, mm. yeah, it's candy. Yeah. Candy, 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 get a steady Garfield. We have to go to this. <laughs> Garfield, Garfield, and friends, Halloween. Alright, uh, we, more questions, send some more questions. Questions. A lot of Halloween yeah. questions in here. What are we gonna do next week for the Halloween one? I don't know. <laughs> There's gonna be no questions. Oh, wow. Yeah, because next week's Halloween, so you'll be doing... Well, our podcast days are, like, before Halloween. I don't know. What are we going to talk... We'll, fig we'll figure something out. Enough. We'll figure something out. I don't know. We'll have, like, a ball of the day bash. You're going to introduce the new character, Skeleton of Seat. That's going <laughs> to... What's your least favorite Christmas candy? What, what, do, you, what do you... 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 What
It was like a like, Santa like Claus those, chocolate. I like those like fruity candy canes. Mint candy canes. <laughs> yeah. fruity candy canes. This question is literally just what candy cane flavor do you like the best? Uh, this question, yeah. someone scrambled to like get their question in. No one. Uh, this is. Uh, so I want to ask about like McDonald's cookies. <laughs> Uh, yeah, let's oh, actually, I like this question. What's your generic non-licensed Halloween costume if you were in a cartoon Halloween special? Ooh. Mm. So I guess this means like only like generic kind of monster candy characters, like kind of that vein stuff, right? Myself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I. Hmm. Remember that? It's <laughs> off topic. Remember that regular show episode where, like. The guy who was voiced by Spike Spiegel dressed up like Spike Spiegel. No. What? Was... Yeah, there yes. was uh, Tecmo. Tecmo dressed as Spike Spiegel because his voice actor Tecmo. was voice voices Spike from Cowboy Bebop. Oh, okay. I was thinking of like you just said Spike Spiegel, like the person. Uh, I who? I think no, if okay. I think if I think if there was a way to start the podcast Netflix cartoon original series and we did a Halloween episode, I think I'd be the ghost with the sheet over the head. Okay. It's like okay. a sheet ghost. You'd, you'd be the Charlie Brown ghost. Yeah. Be like censored entirely because we're not going to take Katakawa for the rights to, to Coronians. So <laughs> I, would, I would not be in the show. Sorry, everybody. I feel like I'll be the character that wears a really cool costume. Like, wow, nice Halloween costume. Like, it's Halloween. Like, what would it be? Would you be like, would you just be screwed up? Yeah. I probably look like Charlie from Always Sunny. <laughs> okay. Um, I don't know. What would I? Would I be like a wolf man, like Bart? Be like like Bart. <laughs> He's the only. I'm sorry, wolf... I've been watching. Um, I've been watching like every. The only, the only wolf man ever, Bart Simpson. <laughs> there was one episode where he's, he's like he turned into a wolf. He's like, cool. I'm a wolf now. Um, I I guess I think I could be that. I I could. I could be like a little animalistic. Okay. Got yeah. just gotta be feral a little bit. Just yeah. one night. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 I, I... You gotta be feral. <laughs> Scooby Doo unleash. Uh, if anyone, <laughs> while we're waiting for like one more question, I wanted to ask because you can ask one. More. We have time for one more question. Um, has the Simpsons ever done a non Treehouse of Horror like Halloween episode, like just like an episode on Halloween? Yeah, I actually there they did one. There was exactly oh. one episode it's called um halloween of horror and um i actually think it's pretty good it's it's one of the like the hd era episodes. Uh. it's like it's pretty good for an hd episode i'd say it's got a good like i think it has an interesting story to it the real chips was gonna say this like you know me the real chips looking like slide his images onto like his black background is like one of the string <laughs> music track plays <laughs> I like, yes. I like the real gyms. That wasn't a knock towards them. <laughs> <laughs> they also did um, Thanksgiving of Horror last year. Oh, uh, with baby Maggie as a turkey. With baby Maggie uh, as a turkey. Did, did they try to eat her? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, the, the plot of that one was they were all, the Simpsons were turkeys and like everyone in Springfield, they were like pilgrims and they were like trying to eat them. That's, that sounds kind of shitty. <laughs> I thought, I think it was actually pretty. Honestly, Thanksgiving of Horror was better than the Trials of Horror that year. That's all I'll say. All right. I mean, Thanksgiving is kind of horrible, so I guess it makes sense. <laughs> I don't think we have any more questions. I think, I think we've. Reached... Everyone just wants to ask about Halloween today. I mean, yeah, I, I, I guess. Done, guys. Code Lyoko, you know. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, Code Lyoko. I, I I have like very vague memories of it. I, like I only remember it because Liv talks about it. And the other week I was hanging out with a friend and they were watching like uh Kolioko. So it was sort of like it was the episode where like I forgot what was that nerd nerd's name, but he sort of got stuck in the digital world. Was, like, <laughs> wow, friends. I'm in the digital world. But in between, because like, it's... <laughs> Go okay, on. man. I got two lives left. Go on, Rosa. <laughs> Sorry. It just got stuck because everyone sort of doesn't really know how to do that. And then he sort of comes out and like, wow, that was amazing. Like, you almost died and got deleted. You shimp. Shimp? Yeah. Is that a word? Are we adding something to our lexicon today? Shimp. Mm -hmm. 
Well, there it's we like go. a combo between simp and uh, yeah. What what's the shelf part? What is that? Oh wait, Prince. he's saying it wrong. <laughs> but no, he just has a digital girlfriend. It's the thing. Wow, I just like ready player one. <laughs> Ah, okay, I guess we don't have anything else to talk about. No like, right. major updates for AAA games or anything. All right, everyone. That got released like an hour ago. <laughs> All right, who cares? Right. I don't care. This has I, been, didn't, I didn't buy the DLC. This has, been, <laughs> this has been another exciting episode of Ready to Start the Podcast. I'm, I'm Ryan. I'm Rosa. <laughs> I'm Bobby. Yeah, okay. Bobby. <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm, I'm clear. Thanks for watching me tonight on my phone. Just in case. Rosa? Oh my god, Bobby! End the episode already! Oh my god!